This chapter is about the mesh deform modifier, and the mesh deform modifier works in a lot of ways like the lattice modifier that I have discussed in a previous chapter. If you want to add a mesh deform modifier, you need to select a mesh. It does not work with the letter. For example, I had to press Alt-C to convert this into a mesh. And then you can choose mesh deform modifier, and it needs a deforming object. Let's choose cube.002. And with the lattice modifier, if I were to go into edit mode right now, I could deform the mesh already. But that doesn't work with a mesh deform. You need to press bind first. So let's have a look at those two options first. Precision obviously controls the precision of the modifier. It's set to 5 by default, but I would not set it that much higher. Because if I press bind here, that already takes quite a long time. And if you put the precisions even higher, that will eat up a lot more memory. Same goes for dynamic. And we'll have a look at what dynamic does in a second. Let me just press bind. That actually took quite a while already. And if I now go into edit mode with the cube, I can deform my mesh here. So what's the difference between the mesh deform and the lattice? I can do the same thing here. But the lattice, for example, cannot use uh, for example, displacement modifier. You can only use those few modifiers that you can see here, as opposed to a mesh where you can use all these. So that's one difference. So let's have a look at dynamic and not dynamic. This one has been bound with the dynamic settings enabled, and this one has been bound without it. The dynamic settings basically correct possible errors that might come from additional modifiers. For example, if I were to add another modifier behind this, the dynamic option would correct that. For example, if I were to use the mesh deform in combination with other deforming modifiers, the dynamic option would actually help to correct that. And probably the biggest difference between dynamic and not dynamic, you can see when it comes to shape keys. I have here prepared two shape keys. If I use the shape key and make it 100%, you can see they are exactly the same. And just so the deformation is the same as well, I prepared the same thing with the cubes. So I'll just put all of these to 100%. And you can see this one has been bound with dynamic option enabled. And it stays precisely inside the cube, even though the mesh has been deformed by a shape key before it's been deformed by a mesh deform modifier. And this does not go for this one. So that's the dynamic option for you. Let's have a look at what a purpose for the mesh deform modifier is. I have the Sintel Lite downloaded from BlendSwap. It's been made by Ben Danzi. And if I select the Sintel mesh here and go to the modifiers, I can see there's a mesh deform modifier. And if I disable it, you can see that the hands jump back. And also, you can see that the clothes here have the same mesh deform modifier applied to them. So if you have an armature controlling the pants and also the legs, there's a possibility that they are controlled in a different way meaning the armature modifier controls them from the inside, which can mean if they're, the weight painting is just slightly incorrect, your legs may poke through the pants, and, you, and obviously you don't want that. So the mesh deform modifier controls them from the outside, meaning that it will deform the surface of the clothing and the mesh, in this case the character, in exactly the same way. So using a mesh deform modifier on the clothing of a character can make sure that your clothing does not penetrate the skin or vice versa. That's it about the mesh deform modifier. Thank you for watching.